Welcome back to the Rock Academy. In this video, I'm be covering the PC Master desktop software. In this video, I'm covering the PC Master desktop software workflow. This is gonna be a complete walkthrough. So I finished doing a flight using the R2A system and I have the USB drive right here with the data on board. And I have my Emlid Reach RS2 base station, which recorded the static observations right here. The first thing I'm gonna do is transfer the data from my USB drive as well as the Rhinex data from my base station to my local machine. Let's do that right now. Okay, here we can see I plugged in the USB drive and I'm going to go ahead and take this data set and I'm going to copy that and move it over to my local drive. I have a folder here called Rock Academy. Boom. This is a short flight, about five gigabytes. It has all the photos, it has the GPS, the IMU, all that data in here. And once I get it loaded over here, we'll go ahead and open this folder and take a look at what's inside. Awesome, just finished copying it over. So inside we have a data folder as well as this PPK command line folder. And then we have the PPK and RTK PC master and painter folders as well as a service log as well. The ones that we're gonna be concerned with today is the PPK PC master project file. Let's go ahead and look inside the data folder. Here we can see several data files. This all looks normal. This is what the data should be looking like. And like I said, we have all the correct files here. So this looks all good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy over that base station data over here into this folder as well. And just put it right inside here next to all these files. It's all fine. There we go. So I placed that raw data right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and extract this right here as well. See, it extracts the folder, and it has the nav and the OBS file. The two files I'm getting from my Reach base station, these are the Rhinex data, the raw observations, and the raw ephemeris data here in the nav file. Those are the two ones that we need. Okay, now that I have my data transferred over to my local machine, and I have my base station data there, I'm just gonna simply double click on this PPK PC master project file. Now we can see the PC master software has opened up and several folders have been instantly created here in my directory where my data is at. Since this is my first time using it, I'm going to go ahead and accept the license. Boom. And we can see here now it's converting the rover file. Good job. And now it's saying base measurement file is not found. That's because of the base station. It's asking me for that base station file. I'm going to come over here to where I extracted that data. Here in this folder, I have that observation file. I'm gonna select that, and since the other, the nav file is right next to it with the same name, it's gonna find both of them. So right now it's actually converting that raw observation in that Rhinex data format into a data format that can be understood by our software. Okay, so now right here, it's asking for the latitude, longitude, and ellipsoidal height. So let me explain this really quick. It's asking for the latitude, longitude, and ellipsoidal height. And what it's asking for, this is in WGS84 ellipsoidal height. That's the coordinate it's asking for right there. So that coordinate is of the phase center of your base station. That's what it's asking for. So that means if you took this base station and you also calculated a precise point from it, maybe using a service like Opus, Oftentimes what you're doing is you're putting on top of a bipod or a tripod and that has a big pole on it and then that is, you know, could be two meters long, tall and this has a, you know, offset to the phase center of the base station and oftentimes in these software you're going to say what that phase offset is as well as the height of your, your you know, tripod and it's going to give you a final destination point after the process software of the point on the ground. Now, this software, what we're asking for, is we're asking for the point right here in the dead center of your GPS. That's what it's asking for. So you're putting the dead center point of this device, not the point on the ground. So if you calculated using Opus and you, you put in that antenna height here and the phase height of your antenna here, then what you can do is take that point on Opus and add that back into it to get this precise location. And it's in WGS84 ellipsoidal height. For me right now, I'm just gonna accept what it says right now. This is the average position of our measurement while we're out there in the field. And I can actually correct this later inside the Rock Cloud cloud software. So I'm gonna say, okay. Uh, 
So now it's gonna go ahead and process that trajectory using all that raw data from the base station and the GPS and IMU on the drone itself, the rover. At this point, we can kind of just sit back and relax and watch it do its thing. It's gonna go ahead and run through several iterative processes where it's gonna solve that lever arm offset and that's the distance from the actual LiDAR itself to wherever you put that GPS antenna at. And this is why I said earlier, you can kind of put it wherever you want because our software, it's gonna figure out where it was located down to about a millimeter. It's very accurate. So let's just let the software do its thing. Here we have this first plot for the GNSS position quality UAV trajectory detected. So this looks really good. This is what you would expect to see on a good data acquisition from the GNSS position quality. After it's calculated that GNSS position quality, it's now solving this loosely coupled IMU GNSS position misclosure and it's trying to refine that lever arm. So you can see this IMU antenna lever arm refinement graph that shows up. And right now it looks pretty terrible, but that's okay because the software is gonna go ahead and minimize this until it gets down below about a millimeter. So while it's refining the lever arm parameters, I'm going to tell you about a couple things that might happen right here that would make this and cause this to fail. And one of those things is the way you fly that calibration flight. So in the previous video inside the R2A introduction and how to fly the calibration flight, I mentioned the importance of flying that straight line at the very beginning, the figure eight, and then flying the straight line back towards you at the end. These two straight lines going away and coming you know, back, it doesn't have to be back, they can be any real direction, as long as it's straight with respect to the drone at the very end in the beginning. And those two are really what this is using to figure out that lever arm offset. It needs both those sections. So if you didn't do that correctly, that would cause this to fail. And so we, we made the software that's really easy and automated, but it relies on just those two things, that you fly straight at the beginning and the end, in the middle, uh, you can do whatever you want. You can go upside down if you want. I mean, you can go crazy with the darn thing. But just make sure at the beginning and end, you fly straight in for five seconds. At the end, you're flying straight for five seconds. You know, usually you're flying right back to you, straight above you, and then you fly just straight down and land. Don't do this, you know, reverse flying. Because if you fly reverse at the, at the very end, it throws the whole thing off. Uh, and that's, it just is what it is. It makes it really easy to post-process as long as you follow those couple rules. So that, that would be the most common reason that this would fail. Another common reason that it might fail is a common reason that maybe you turned your base station off before you turned LiDAR off. That means the base station data didn't record over the entire span of the aerial LiDAR data. And that would also cause it to fail because you wouldn't have base station measurements while you were capturing in the air. So that's why it's a good idea to have this running a couple minutes before and a couple minutes after just to make sure you got that overlap. Awesome, just finished calculating that antenna lever arm and it looked like it was below, definitely below a centimeter. It looks like it was close to a millimeter. I didn't really catch it. I looked away from the screen for one second. So now it's solved the antenna lever arm and it's going to go ahead and process that tightly coupled UAV trajectory. It's gonna do this in three passes, forward and reverse, and each time it does this, it's minimizing the errors. It's finding the trajectory going from time zero to the future and time future back into the past of time zero. And this is actually the most important part about doing PPK, which is what this software is doing. It's a post-processing kinematic software that's doing a tightly coupled process trajectory. So that is really important. That's what we tell you why people don't use RTK. It's because you can't do this multi-pass. You can see right now it's doing multi-pass one, forward and reverse. And what again, what it's doing is it's calculating that trajectory backwards and forward at the same time and finding any errors between those two calculations and then minimizing it. And then it passes again, <laughs> minimizes it. And so because you can go backwards in time and forwards in time with the same mathematics, it's going to minimize that trajectory and get it very, very tight and accurate. And you just can't do that in real time because we, we haven't solved time travel yet. I, I know, I really want it as well, but time travel will come soon. For now, we'll just use the desktop software. It'll do it here.
So now we just finished processing that trajectory and it's gonna start loading the full point cloud from start to finish. And there we go, we have the LiDAR data processed and showing here in the PC Master desktop software. And you can see that the entire trajectory is selected. And so what I can do, the first thing I usually do when I get here is I, I right click anywhere and I'm gonna color by intensity. And that just helps you, you see the LiDAR data a little bit better. And now you can click and you can rotate around. You can actually see the LiDAR data here in the viewer. And there are two keys on the keyboard that you need to know to navigate here on the PC Master software. The first key is holding down control and clicking and dragging. So when you hold down control and click and drag, that translates you across the viewer. The second key you wanna know is holding shift. When you hit shift and click and drag, it's going to rotate you about that center point on the viewer. And the third key combination is holding control and shift at the same time, and this is going to take you up and down the Z axis. So whenever you rotate and you just zoom in with your controller, you're always zooming into that center spot right here on your screen. And if you wanna zoom into an actual feature on the ground, you need to have the cursor on that feature on the ground. So you'd have to lower it down. There you go, I'm on the ground. I can zoom right into that, no problem. Very easy now. Okay, so the typical fastest workflow you're gonna do here on the PC Master software, it's real simple. All you're gonna do is come up here to paths. You're gonna go ahead and remove this one. This is, everything is selected right now. So I'm gonna remove that. And now you can just see the trajectory. So the simplest thing to do is right click at the beginning, start the selection there. And then come all the way here to the end, right click and finish selection here. Now it's gonna go ahead and populate that selection that we just selected. And there we go. Now we have the LiDAR data right here, just of our selection. Now in the same fashion that we just clicked and start here and finish there, if you had multiple takeoffs and landings, so you're hot swapping batteries because you're doing many, many missions, you can do this and just right click again on the next spot. I can just show you right here. I can start selection again and finish selection and have another selection. You can do this as many times as you want. And this is the, how you would get rid of all of the comings and goings, you know, to and from your takeoff and landing spot and any calibration flight you have. So at this point, you have all the LiDAR data that you want and you simply click produce LAS. And that's all you have to do. You just double click that PC master project file there in your data. You select your base station. It's going to ask you where that base station precise location is at. And again, that's in WGS84 ellipsoidal height, and it's the position of the phase center of your GNSS receiver. And then it will process, generate that trajectory. You just select start and finish where you want to generate the data from, and you export the data by clicking produce LAS. It's that simple. But while I got you here, let's talk about a few other features of the PC Master software. Because like I said earlier, there's a lot the software can do. It's not just for producing the, the LiDAR data here. So we have all these other buttons up here. New project, open project, pretty self-explanatory. Paths, that's where you can see the paths that you have selected. So if you had multiple selections, you'd have multiple going on here. They'd be colored differently. Lasers, we actually can isolate individual lasers here on the R2A. There's actually six lasers on that AVIA sensor. So you can isolate those. Um, and then we have the linear and angular offset. These are boresight angles. And this is where you can actually calibrate and tune up the system if it ever were to get out of calibration. You can do it in real time. And then we have the rock orientation. And this is just the orientation of the LiDAR with respect to the vehicle. It's already set. And then cloud filter, save project, produce LES. Let's talk about cloud filter really quick. There's a couple things that we do in order to increase the accuracy ever so slightly of the R2A system. And that's we actually apply a filter onto the rotation angle. So you can see here, I just turned the filter on. Well, it's going zero to zero. So for the R2A, the center spot is 270 degrees and the field of view is 70 degrees. So the maximum would be 305 degrees and the minimum would be 235 degrees. So this would be your maximum extents of that sensor. It goes from 235 to 305. 
Now what I do to get it just ever so slightly more accurate, I knock off two degrees on both sides. So I'm gonna go from 235 to 237 and 305 to 303. Now this is an advanced tutorial. You don't have to do this, but it does make the data ever so slightly more accurate. And the reason for this is that these sensors, these LiveOx sensors, they basically go out and turn around and come back. So it's kind of doing this pattern. And so when it's in that line scan mode, the data is very accurate. But whenever it turns around, it really whips around really quick on the actual you know, system itself. It's just the optics, how they work. And so there is actually ever so slightly inaccuracies right there where it whips around really fast. So if you cut off two degrees on both sides, you're just cutting off that little turnaround section. And then you're just getting all the higher accurate data from the sensor itself. This is just a little tidbit about the physics and how that sensor was designed and it, the optics of it enable you to just trim that off and the data gets a lot more accurate. So it's just a little bit of knowledge for you to know that you can do a few things here on the PC Master software to really enhance that data. Other button here, so distance is already checked. So it's filtering out everything that's too close to the sensor. There's a bunch of noise that happens really close to the sensor. But this distance filter can be used if you're using the system in a mobile mapping situation. Oftentimes, if you have the sensor pointed straight out in front of you, the lasers can go all the way on into infinity when it doesn't hit anything. And then on that glancing angle of the ground, the data will go very far out and just get some inaccuracies when it gets so far away. So usually what I do when I'm doing mobile mapping is I range gate that data so that way I'm only getting a narrow band that's only maybe you know 20 meters in front of me. Because I'm gonna push over that data, I'm gonna get all that close data to my sensor, make sure it's all at high accuracy data. But on the drone system, I'm just gonna leave it like this, it looks great to me, and I leave the reflectivity and all the other filters the same. The only one I'm really ever messing with when I'm flying is this rotation angle and I'm gonna filter off those two degrees on both sides just to get that extra bit of accuracy and precision from my R2A system. Now, let me tell you about the bore siding. So we can see right here, we have multiple passes. Let's go ahead and rotate this. Let's look at this structure right here. So we have multiple passes looking at this same structure and we can see it's lined up pretty darn well. Now let's investigate what happens when we play with this angular offset. So we have yaw, pitch, and roll. So let's move with the roll. So it's at negative 0.05. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it and just show you what it looks like. You can see the two data sets moving with respect, well it's the same data set, but now you can see doubling right there of this cylindrical object, right? So that is now unboresighted. And we have a full procedure to show you how to bore sight in a different document. But just so you know, you can do it here in real time and see the data line up. And this is how you would just tune up the data. So I encourage you to actually, you can play with this to tune up your data and see if you can just make it ever so slightly better. And really take note of what the numbers were before you did anything and then make minor adjustments just to see if you can get the data a little bit more accurate. And keep in mind, really what's happening on this data set is we're seeing the inside of this, this object here and we're seeing the outside of it. So there is some thickness to it. All right, now that I showed you a few of the advanced features, I'm gonna go ahead and just click the Produce LES to generate my LES of this selected area. Now you can see here at the bottom, it is generating the first segment of the point cloud. And it's almost done already, already at 40%. I'm gonna go ahead and open this folder here where we had all our data. And we can see that there's actually another new folder here called clouds. And in this clouds is where that data will be stored. It's finished and here we have that PPK cloud. So that was your introduction and a walkthrough of the PC Master desktop software. On the next video, I'm gonna colorize the data using the PC Painter software. I'll see you on the next one here on the Rock Academy.